This is the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. It features three different cameras with varying focal lengths. In today's video, we're going to see which of those three focal lengths is the best for photogrammetry, if there's a preference, and how this drone stacks up compared to some of the other drones out there, namely the DJI Mini 4 Pro, and also the DJI Air 3, the most newest set of drones. This drone's been out for a little bit now, but I think it's also time to do a very thorough review comparing it picture to picture with some other drones out there. Let's talk a little bit about what's special about this and what's special about the cameras. And if you're a student in the DJI models, you may realize that this is the two lens version. So how am I testing that third lens? Well, that's a good question. So the DJI Air 3 actually uses the same 3X camera on the top here. So the what's in the Mavic 3 Pro, the third lens that they added, is the same sensor aperture and lens assembly that is what's in here. So I'll be using the 3X camera here to see what that looks like on the Mavic 3. It is the identical sensor, so there really is no difference there. So when it comes to the Mavic 3 family, you actually get this main sensor, which is this 4 thirds inch Hasselblad camera, which is a phenomenal camera, by the way, especially for video and low light settings. And then you also get this 7X camera on the top here. Now, in my observations especially, the 7X tends to be a lot more sensitive to noise and low light, whereas the Hasselblad camera is really great and phenomenal. Whereas stuff like on the Air 3, for example, the Air 3's sensors are about the same size. However, the 3X has less aperture. Also, the Mavic 3's sensor tilts up to about 30 degrees. I'm not going to do that, though, Howard, because this has a gimbal lock on it. But it tilts up to about 30 to 45 degrees and allows you to look up a little bit. Not as much as other drones, such as the Air 3, where the Air 3 can allow you to tilt up much higher. I'm going to be really interested to see how the 4 thirds camera sensor here with that 20 megapixel Hasselblad camera compares to the camera assembly on the bottom here, which the bottom camera assembly, by the way, is also the same one that's in the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So the top one, the 3X, is what's in the Mavic 3 Pro, and the bottom camera assembly, the f regular 48 megapixel sensor that's in the Air 3, is the same one that's in the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So throughout this, you'll understand pretty quickly what the quality looks like. Now, I do think that in my testing, especially with photogrammetry and some of the pictures, that the Air 3 has a different image noise suppression algorithm than the Mini 4 Pro. However, it is truly the same sensor. Let's take a look. I'm going to fly a couple missions, and we'll see how good it is. Also, throughout this video, you might see this on the drone. This is the AnyDrone RTK module, and if you know what RTK is, it means that it reduces the positional error down greatly, something me and a team of engineers have been working on for the last, I want to say, two years. So if you're interested in pre-ordering this, it's $20 for like $200 off, and it's entirely refundable, so you can get your money back if you choose not to. I'll include a link to this down in the description. So next up, we have to go through and create a flight plan, so we want to autonomously have this go through and track across the sky and take the same pictures as before so real quick i'm just going to create a flight plan around the area that we're going to take our models of so there's this really cool baseball stadium nearby me and i am going to kind of create some missions real quick around it so um, waypoint map basically allows you to go through and generate points um, i have a bunch of points here i would highly recommend if you're really wanting to get into this and autonomously mapping with um, waypoint map especially since it works with the air 3 mavic 3 family and the mini 4 pro um, watch the full tutorial video because this is going to get very complicated very quickly um, however um, there's just a bunch of different tools to create selections and make different kinds of maps so um, i would just say if you really want to get into this follow that tutorial i'm just going to go through create a quick couple flight plans and then we're going to go out and fly them. I'm not going to take a whole bunch of time explaining how this works. And so I'm going to do two passes around the center just as before. And then there's also this like little picnic area slash bathhouse that I'm also going to create two flight plans around. And then after that, let's go through and compare this apples to apples to the previous mission on the Air 3 and then I also think on the Mini 4 Pro. Okay, so next up it's time to load this up into the controller. So I'm going to just show you how to do this because this one's kind of weird. Um, but I have the DJI RC, and I'm just going to create a couple test points, and then I'm going to save that mission. And what I'm going to do is I'm just replacing that mission file with the mission file that I just generated on Waypoint Map. So I'm going to go in, um, I have it loaded up on a disk, so I put it on an SD card and put it in my controller, and now I'm going to copy it to where DJI saves the 
um, waypoint missions which if you follow along um, you can just go to this folder and you'll find one of the mission names which is basically just this random set of text and go through and then just copy it there and now you're going to rename it again watch the tutorial if this is too fast for you i go a lot slower there i'm trying not to waste everyone's time that's already seen this a bazillion times and you just make sure you replace the name the one important thing i will tell you is make sure you get the dot kmz and what you want to also make sure is you just replace the delete the old one and then replace your new output.kmz with that correct name so you just rename it make sure you get the kmz of course you don't want dot kmz dot kmz and you paste it and your final output should of course be a flawless file there and then of course you can just check it real quick if you go in here and you can just see and make sure that it loads up properly as you can see here all the points are loaded up properly and then I'm going to go through now and fly the mission. So flying the mission is pretty simple. You just hit go like you would any other waypoint mission on your drone. And you can go through and have it fly autonomously for you. So now that it's ready to go, let's get started at least taking these pictures. And so it's going to upload. It's going to fly up and then start taking these pictures. Now again, one of the fancy things is I'm testing this with both the 7X and the 1X. And the fancy thing about this camera is just how nice the sensor is on this. So if we come down here and we take a look, we'll just fly around here and uh, see what it looks like. So I'm going to give it a sec to generate this model and then we'll hop back over into aerial model to create the 3D model from there and then see how it compares to the other drones. So first up, I'm going to head to aerialmodel.com. This is a website that I made to kind of make 3D models. Uh, if you go through, you can basically create, upload a bunch of pictures. The free version lets you upload like 25 pictures to try it out. So I'm going to upload all the pictures that I made or I took with the Mavic 3 Pro and we'll go through and see what those look like when we create a 3D model. So first up is the baseball stadium with the Mavic 3 Pro um, and this is with the 20 megapixel sensor and actually if I turn up the point budget um, this looks I want to say decent it's not super great however what's an interesting thing is with the 7x it actually looks like garbage. Um, and I think realistically it's because I didn't uh, zoom out far enough. Uh, I mean, it looks okay, but it also inverted for some reason, which I'd be interested to take a look and see how that happened as well. But it is weird that the 7X, in my opinion, isn't as usable as at least the 3X on the Air 3. Um, if we go through and look at the um, 7X here with the on this, it actually looks a little bit better on the picnic area. It looks a little better. Um, but I realistically don't think it's that worth it, um, specifically just because how small of an area it can cover. Um, realistically, if you're just going to be flying something over a small area or focused on a, a small subject, you just get closer. I think the versatility of having the larger sensor size and just being able to get closer versus such a zoomed in sensor size and having to be so far away to look at something is, I think, a, a big trade-off. And I don't think the 7X is as appealing as the uh, main sensor or the 3x on the air 3 or the 3x on the mavic 3 to be honest and then this is with the 20 megapixel sensor and this looks decent as well again much more area covered so it depends on what you're trying to do if you want to do kind of a very small area then that's probably a 7x kind of situation however i even do kind of question whether or not the validity of um this 20 megapixel sensor because this still is a little less detailed than the 48 megapixel sensor on the Air 3. So this is the 3x sensor specifically on the Mavic 3 or the Air 3. This is from technically the Air 3 but it's the same sensor and I think this one is a much better in terms of capturing detail than it did with the 7x and it also still does cover a pretty good distance. So I think that the 48 megapixel at least is pretty solid when it comes to actually capturing details and I think that it did a good job overall so I do like the 3x a whole lot and this is the 3x on that same picnic area again notice how much better of a job it does collecting the details I think the 48 megapixel sensor overall is just slightly better and over the 7x is 12 megapixels so I think this actually does end up looking slightly better and again, this is the Air 3's sensor, and I would say that it does do a slightly better job, especially that 48 megapixels with photogrammetry, and maybe that's just my, like, testing situation. I do think that the quality is just ever so slightly better. 
However, I definitely do think if you were doing something in lower lighting situations, then very easily the Mavic 3 sensor would be better. I realistically think it looks almost just as good, um, but for some reason for me, I just think it's ever so slightly better on the Air 3 slash Mini 4 Pro sensor. Uh, and I also do kind of prefer the 3X over the 7X as well. So I think I'm leaning towards the Air 3 kind of being the best drone for photogrammetry versus just the Mavic 3 with that extra 7X that isn't entirely used so much. I definitely do think though, like if you're doing video, I think you'd be fine with the Mavic 3. And I still think that the Mini 4 Pro is a really solid drone if you didn't want to spend the extra money on a 3X. Um, but I definitely do think the 3X is really good for some detailed environments. So I think realistically, after taking this drone for a spin, I think that looking at it, I think the video out of this is phenomenal, especially out of that four thirds sensor. I think the megapixels, especially on the Air 3 with that 48 megapixels versus the 20 on here might be slightly better. And I think especially since the 7X doesn't seem to be good enough, unless you are extremely far away, I think realistically only the 3X and the 1X zoom cameras are only going to really get used. I don't think that the 7X really has a lot of practicality unless you are flying ridiculously high. I think the 3X is just right. So if you were looking at maybe getting something specifically for video and also to do photogrammetry, then I think the Mavic 3 Pro would be fine. But I think right now I'm pretty confident that in my opinion at least the Air 3 seems to be the best drone with just the camera assemblies it has. However my personal preference still is the Mini 4 Pro just because of the size and also the fact that you really get the same sensor on the Air 3 as you do with the Mini 4 Pro at least with the 1x sensor. So I think the 3x is great for high detail environments however you can get the same 3x camera assembly as you would on the Air 3 so really do you need the Mavic 3 Pro. I think the main camera assembly, that 4 thirds Hasselblad camera, is pretty solid. However, I do think that the Air 3 currently is just about as equivalent, if not slightly better in my opinion, for photogrammetry as well, because only difference between this and the Classic is just having one camera instead of two. And to be honest with you, that 3x zoom definitely does help in detailed environments. If you're interested in checking out the RTK module that's been mentioned in this video, if you're interested in checking out the photogrammetry engine aerial model, or if you're interested in checking out Waypoint Map to do autonomous mission planning, I'll include links to their respective videos down below and you can check them out. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you around.